Welcome to Universal Wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. We have a great program for you today. Up to the ring for the action with Ken Wallace, your announcer. Thank you very much, Lou. Our first match. One fall with a 10 minute time limit. From Paducah, Kentucky, weighing 270 pounds, Dr. Jerry Watson. His opponent from Nashville, Tennessee, weighing 240 pounds, Don Green. Well, I'm not really too familiar with this Dr. Jerry Watson. He's a wrestling physician, and people do many and various things uh, as a hobby or for a hobby. I am very familiar with Don Green, uh, a veteran wrestler. I don't mean that he's an old one, but he is a veteran. He's been around for several years, knows his wrestling very well. And I have wrestled him a, a time or two. Very competitive wrestler. And I've always been impressed with him. Has a lot of know-how, overhead wrist lock, makes some beautiful moves in there. Referee Bruchette, call for the break. I notice that Don Green is a little, just a little faster, a little handier in locking up with him and securing a hold. Dr. Jerry Watson is accusing Don Green of pulling the hair. However, I didn't see that. Beautiful one arm takedown. Barred the arm with the leg. In the ropes and a break. Headlock and a punch. It could have been low, but I don't think so. It could have been into the throat. This Dr. Jerry Watson has nearly white hair and it goes along with his white body. He doesn't have any sun at all. And a punch right to Don Green's apparently throat. Referee Bruchette is warning him, warning Dr. Uh, Jerry Watson. Bruchette is asking whether he's using a thumb, which is a karate thing, and it's illegal. One leg takedown. Good move. And stomping the leg. As a toe hold. Down counters it with the other leg. Very good move. And another one leg takedown. This time by Don. Don Green, modified step over. Very, very effective and very painful. Could be a concession hold. Reaching back with an arm like that is a very dangerous thing. And I think he's learned the error of his ways, but it's a little late. Referee is asking him whether he concedes or not. Dr. Jerry Watson's in trouble. Crawling for the ropes by degrees, inching his way in there. Finally secured one of the ropes with his hand. Referee Bruchette calls for a break. And being the gentleman that he is, Don Green, he broke very cleanly. Watson was reputed to be very aggressive, very good. Don Green kicked that leg. It doesn't look too, too good for Dr. Jerry Watson. That green is right on him. Don appears to be in very good condition. He has a good suntan. He's got his body in great shape, as usual. Headlock. Don using the leverage up. Oh, I think he got the back of Don's hair. Don, like myself and many other wrestlers, lost quite a bit of his hair in the wrestling game. Don takes his time and measures a man very carefully. <laughs> Don
Don Green. Dr. Jerry Watson. And another punch to the throat. Don Green is measuring up his man. Good competitor. Watson is a big fellow, weighs 270 pounds. Watson is working Don Green over a little bit now. Oh, Green kicked him. It was a legal kick, however, with the instep. Oh, a neck breaker. Very, very effective hold. And Don Green wins the fall with it. Six minutes. Six minutes. Don Green won the fall in six minutes. The winner of the match coming in six minutes from Nashville, Don Green. Ladies and gentlemen, another great match in store for you. So up to the ring with Ken. The second event features a tag team introducing from Pego Pego Samoa, weighing a total of 610 pounds, with their manager Saul Weingaroff, the Islander. Opponents for this event from Copenhagen, Denmark, at 305 pounds. His partner, Troy Graham, from Tampa, Florida, 260 pounds. While well, Eric the Red and Troy Graham make a very, very tough, rough team. Uh, they, of course, have some great opponents in there with the Fabulous Islanders and Gentleman Saul Weingroff with a combined weight of 610 pounds, but Eric DeRed supersedes either of them in weight, I believe. Very, very aggressive fellow, and on occasion will use that bone to unfair advantage given the opportunity. We've got a very sharp referee in there tonight, Wendell Bruchette, and I think he'll keep his eye on him pretty well. He knows uh, the wrestling game very well. A good referee. Troy Graham and Afa, the Islander, in the ring at this point. Now, Troy does a lot of complaining and seems to disarm his opponent by letting him think he's doing too well or very well, but uh, uh, he will stand watching. He has some tactics that could even probably be called underhanded. Beautiful one arm takedown. Related to judo. The Islanders are such big, strong fellows. The people really are unhappy with Troy Graham. They don't approve of his tactics, not even a little bit. Overhead wrist lock. Ah, if the Islander seemed to be overempowering him, but Troy used the hair. And again, he sneaked it. Brochette could not see it. The referee, oh, sick of the Islander, retaliated to Troy Graham. Pulled his hair. Well, that's an unusual thing because they really are law-abiding citizens. They, they really listen to the referee and do as they should. But on occasion, They'll just tolerate so much abuse and then they go to work. Reverse wrist lock. Well, they certainly have their thing together on pulling hair. Troy Graham and Eric Toretta have done their share of that. They're hiding it very well, sneaky.
He tried to hit A for the Islander, and instead, ha, Troy Graham hit his own partner when the A for the Islanders spun him around rapidly when he saw him coming. Beautiful maneuver. Eric and, and Troy are not too happy with each other at this point. Of course, I don't think Eric is happy with the world or anyone in it. Very cantankerous fellow. There's a lot of grunting and saying, oh, he doesn't answer like, like most people do. He just glares and grunts. Wow. Troy Graham tried to use a flying tackle on AFA. It's like moving a truck. Those Islanders have tremendous strength and move so rapidly for the big fellows that they are. They just move like middleweights. That Graham's doing some catching. I think he came over to the corner to look for a tag, and Eric DeRed wasn't there. Beautiful, beautiful. Did a double wrist lock and then a leg trip down. Beautiful maneuver. Saw Weingroff, the Islanders, and George Weingroff, the wrestling coach, wrestler of the year 1971, apparently do a lot of training together. Wow, they're really abusing A for the Islander at this point. 305 pounds hanging on his neck with his throat right over the rope. That's got the smart. Troy Graham very aggressive. It didn't pay off. AFA has all the courage in the world. Oh, and sick of the Islander. They switched off. A legitimate tag. Very exciting match. Oh, I heard that one over here. That's Sika throws him in there. Flips him about. Oh, that <laughs> Eric the Red will not tag off. He's angry with Troy. He's angry with Troy Graham for an accidental punch. He's angry with him. He will not tag off. That is not what tag team wrestling is about, but Eric the Red is angry with him because he accidentally hit him. And he's making Troy Graham pay the price. That is not the way to win a tag team battle, however. When his partner needs a tag, he should assist him. Eric the Red sneaking in there. Front chancery or headlock, it's called. Front headlock. Very effective. It's made to turn the neck the way it's not supposed to go, and that really does hurt. Wow, a double kick. In-step kicks, however, they're legal. And an elbow smash. Now Eric is coming in. He made a save. He saved his partner. But he will not accept the tag, or he has not recently. The tremendous power these Islanders have. They're doing orthodox things, and it seems so natural to them because they have the power to handle it. They're up and down the ring. They've got Eric the Red. That's. That's fantastic. The power that Sika has, he just bounced him off that rope. Trying to reach in and assist. And got dropped on his back. Double elbow. Wow, double chop. However, double judo chop. Legal. Blind mare. Has him by the face. I can't see just how, his, how he has his hands. I don't know what kind of a hold he has on him. Sick of the Islander has Troy Graham. Has him by the nose and by the mouth. And is really heaping the abuse on him. That Troy Graham really needs a tag at this point. I'm afraid he's being weakened systematically by the Islanders. Very competitive though, he hangs in there. 
Now, finally, Eric the Red took it. He accepted a, a, a tag. Eric the Red thinks he has a head start because he has been in there a little while, thinks maybe he could be a little tired. Beautiful slam. What tremendous power he has to pick a man up like that. Sika weighs in the area of 300. Flying Mare. And a splash. Wow, he missed the splash. Knocked the wind out of him, apparently. Half is going to work on him. How long has it been? How long has this been? How long has it been? You're keeping time. Slam right off the top rope. Fantastic amount of power. One arm just muscled him over. Looked like a sleeper hole that Sika has on Eric the Red. Backdrop on Troy Graham. The Islanders certainly are heaping the abuse on Eric the Red and Troy Graham at this point. Came in for a tag. Eric is looking out the window again. He won't accept the tag. If I were Troy, I would not be too pleased with Eric as a partner at this point. Right in the tummy. That's, Afa really lays him in there. Into the ropes, and the elbow smash. Up by the hair, Afa's angry or he wouldn't use the hair. He normally wouldn't do that. Headbutt, that coconut headbutt is really something. And here comes Sika with the splash. Wow, and that is it. The Islanders win over Troy Graham, Eric the Red in a team match. Eric the Red is very unhappy with Troy Graham for losing, but I think he can blame himself because he would not assist his partner often enough. The winner of the fall and the match coming in 11 and a half minutes, the Islanders, Afa and Sika. This match between Eric the Red, Troy Graham, and the Islanders was fantastic. A really very, very exciting match. And now up to the ring for more action, ladies and gentlemen. Ken? Your next match, one fall with a 10-minute time limit from Parts Unknown, weighing 240 pounds, the Destroyer. And from Belton, Carolina, his opponent at 231 pounds, Tommy Sigler. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this Tommy Sigler is some kind of an athlete. Uh, he's taken his lumps from the spoiler and various other people. And he has an injured head, but his fantastic conditioning uh, is paying off beautifully, as it always will. Uh, great wrestler, great athlete, very, very fine gentleman, a pleasure to be around, and a real pleasure to watch to wrestle. He's beautiful. He really knows what he's doing in there.
Double wrist lock. That's the way to use it. That's beautifully executed. Into the ropes. Referee Morton calls for break. Clean break. A double wrist lock that Tommy Siegler had was very well executed. Could be a concession hold. Free Morton calling a break. Tommy broke again. Well, our masked man seems to be using the sanctuary of the ropes at every opportunity. Side headlock. Brought him over with a lot of steam, just a lot of snap. Stretched the neck a little bit, I suppose. <laughs> Tommy has a tremendous pair of arms. And you can imagine the pressure that he can bear on a person. Mass man putting a rope again. Tommy broke it clean with a slight threat, but he didn't do anything. Beautiful balance. If you watch how Sigler walks about the ring, measures his man. Keeps his balance at all times. He's doing some catching right now. The masked man is working him over. In the corner, Beal. That's tough on a sacroiliac. <laughs> One of the calculated risks with wrestlers is that they have, on occasion, get a sacroiliac, lower part of the back injured, and it's a tough thing to heal up. A body slam or the right kind of a fall or beal could very well injure one. Side headlock again. This man is pulling the Tommy's hair, and he certainly has a lot of it to pull. He throws those punches in there pretty well because he's really working Tommy over. He should make the break. Should get the man back. Oh! He threw a right elbow that was devastating. And a backdrop, very rapidly done. Didn't wait to loft and just flipped him over. Tommy's laying the boots in there now. Legal, the bottom of the foot, not the toe. Mass man under the rope. Morton calls for the break, pushes him back, making the count. You have a 10 count outside the ring. If he does not return by the 10 count, he loses the match. Tommy is saying, get in here. He wants him. He doesn't want the match in that way. He wants him in that ring. He's got the arm included in the, in, the, in the head there. It's easier to pin a man from that position if you do take him over. The masked man is trying to defend himself. Hit Tommy about the head, and Tommy's had enough abuse about that head from the spoiler recently. He doesn't need any more of it. But Free Morton tells him to go ahead and wrestle. Mixing it up. Do another punch in there into the throat. Flying mare. And the bottom of a foot. Tried another flying mare. Tommy has an abdominal stretch on him, a standing abdominal stretch. That is a concession hold. Somewhere in the area of five or six minutes, I believe, Ken Wallace will announce the, the time. Tommy Sigler wins with an abdominal stretch. Beautifully executed. Ken will give you the results. The winner of the fall and the match, Tommy Sigler.
Well, we just witnessed another great match. Ladies and gentlemen, have a very, very fine match coming up. And Mr. Wrestling and George Weingroff. George Weingroff was voted Wrestler of the Year in 1971. Now as a wrestling coach in Indiana, very fine wrestler, this should be a great match. Up to the ring with Ken. Thank you, Lou. This match, one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Introducing from parts unknown, Mr. Wrestling at 245 pounds. His opponent from Nashville, Tennessee, weighing in at 218 pounds, George Weingaroff. Well, this should prove to be a very interesting match. It probably will just be a, a straight wrestling match. They're both fine young wrestlers. I don't think they're oriented in rough wrestling, either one. A beautiful hip throw. A reversal. A couple of fine young athletes. George Weingroff uh, has a real, real good athletic record. I saw him wrestle when he was a 12-year-old in school here in Nashville. Since then, why he's progressed, he was wrestler of the year in 1971. Uh, he has so many awards for wrestling. Uh, he competed against the Russians and all the Europeans in the Junior Olympics and did very, very well. He is now coaching wrestling at the Indiana School for the Blind. Uh, watching him operate, beautiful one arm takedown, a drag, arm drag, and a reversal again. But I pointed out more than once that George has just 10% of his eyesight and he's legally blind, and he has so much wrestling expertise that uh, one could hardly recognize that he doesn't see as well as some of us do. He, uh, he executes holds just so smoothly and so beautifully. Once he gets his hands on an opponent, uh, he knows exactly where he's going, and uh, that's what he's doing now. <laughs> Reverse that, that hammer lock. This young man that he's wrestling, Mr. Wrestling, is again a very clean, fine young athlete. They're doing a switch back and forth. Uh, it's professional wrestling, but the manner in which they're executing their things is reminiscent of amateur work. They do some beautiful takedowns. Very artistic. It takes a lot of learning, a lot of time to learn to do these things very well. And a headlock, and out. Another headlock, and a head scissor now. Well, George was persistent and finally wore him out. Well, that's just great. Mr. Wrestling discovered the head scissor wasn't working, so he discontinued it, and that's just wise. Side headlock, made popular by the great Ed Stranger Lewis, now deceased, formerly my manager, and. Mentor, handled my public relations for years. Great, great wrestler, probably the greatest the world has ever known, Ed Stranger Lewis. Another headlock, beautifully done. Good balance, just George Weingroff has beautiful balance. He knows where he is at all times. Uh, once you get the feel of the mat and, and, and you just feel at home there and you sort of float on it and never end up on the bottom, why uh, you could possibly be a wrestler. George has to referee, see what he says, ref. Into the rope. Oh. Threw a drop kick in there. Another drop kick by George. And a double. Oh. Well, both with the same idea. That could be disastrous for both. You've got to watch your opponent very, very carefully because if something occurs where you think that he may possibly take off a drop kick, it certainly wouldn't be wise to use one. Oh, body crash. Well, I think that possibly could tell us something. I don't think that George could quite see him coming until he was there. And I think the same thing occurred again. Yeah, it's a matter of, well, <laughs> These fellows are cross-roughing their, their talents, trying to take a page out of each other's book. Good body slam. They're just trying to show each other, I believe, if you can do it, I can do it. They can't pick each other up when the other's trying. That's a very natural block, very good.
Fine young athletes. And a hammerlock. Mr. Wrestling has a hammerlock on George Weingroff. Spun out of it or he tried to, it didn't make it. Trying for a flying mare. Mr. Wrestling held on to the hammerlock. Very tenacious. Hammerlock is a concession hold, very, very good hold. If it's used in, a, in the right manner, it can be a concession hold. There are ways to block it. If one has a hammerlock on, you can get onto the mat. You can block it so it can't injure you too badly. Flying mare. And he hang on again. He's hanging on like a, just like a tiger. George Weingroff has his red, white, and blue wrestling trunks on. A very simple maneuver, but beautifully done. Many times, the easy, the short, the simple way, fireman's carry takedown. Beautifully done. It's actually an amateur takedown. I'm really enjoying these two fine young athletes. It's a cross bar that he has on the arm. Could be painful to the elbow. Clean break. I'll bet on it. They got a hand for that. They got a hand for the clean break. And the pin looks like it's going to be close to a pin. No, didn't quite make it. Turned him over. They're very evenly matched in power. I'm sure that George has more know-how than he has. The referee's asking him what they want to do. See if they both want to want to break clean. Uh, they agreed, and they have a clean break. And that's the way to go. They shook hands on it. Hammerlock again. He's hanging on to, well, there he got rid of him then. Another hammerlock. <laughs> Mr. Wrestling wants to wear him out with that hammerlock. Over the, wow. Dumped him out of the ring. That's one way to get rid of him. Looks like Mr. Wrestling hurt his leg. That's what happened, he injured his leg. Now George Weingroff left the ring to shake hands with him, tells him that he's sorry that he injured his leg, he's sorry that he couldn't continue, he couldn't get back in the ring. That could happen very easily. He already has one knee band, protective band on one knee. Ken, would you take it, please? In eight minutes, the winner of the fall and the match, George Weingaroff. Great match in store for us, the spoiler and beautiful Bruce Swayze, tag team champions of the world, and they're going to wrestle Big Jim Wilson, All-American, All-Hall of Famer, just a great, great football and wrestling star, 
and Luis Arriba Martinez from Mexico City. It's a great match. I'm very happy that you people can see it on television. It's going to be for the duration. So whatever happens, uh, the championship may change hands right now. And up to the ring with Ken for the action. Our final event, one fall to the duration. From parts unknown, weighing 261 pounds, his partner from Sarasota, Florida, weighing 230 pounds, the spoiler and beautiful Bruce Swayze. <clears throat> In this corner, their opponents from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 255 pounds, and his partner, also from Mexico City, weighing 228 pounds, Big Jim Wilson and Luis Arriba Martinez. Well, this should prove to be something, ladies and gentlemen. This big Jim Wilson meets and greets all the people, and he is in the ring, jumping over the top rope, ready for action, has a great partner by the name of Luis Arriba Martinez. There's a lot of enthusiasm in that corner. Should be a great, great match. Kangaroo Al Costello at ringside. Morton calling for a break. Referee Morton calling for a break. Swayze threw one in there. Jim Wilson retaliated very rapidly. He says, come on and get it. That big fellow certainly doesn't have any qualms about going in there and taking one to give one. And the people are right behind him. He certainly generates a lot of enthusiasm. A go behind by Bruce Swayze. Good wrestling move. Wilson is extremely strong. Oh, he was going to separate him just with his legs. And that Bruce Swayze just doesn't know what quit is. <laughs> he was going to give him the elbow and ran into a foot. That Wilson is something. They don't know where he's going. He does unorthodox things and mixes them up pretty well. The spoiler has him by the throat at this point. Not with the iron claw, but he does have him by the throat. <clears throat> the tag team champions, the spoiler and beautiful Bruce Swayze. That Swayze is pulling on his neck. Got his back of his neck right over the rope. And that Swayze is some kind of a muscle man himself. Fantastic physique. Throwing the boots in there. They're working Wilson over pretty well. He's doing some catching. Spoiler has him by the throat again. Pulling his neck up over the rope there, which is a strangle. Refree Morton having a difficult time handling these brutes. Swayze coming in with a knee. Not illegal, it was the fore part of the leg. And the end of the throat came in for the second one and missed it. Spoiler took over with a legal tag. Referee Morton having a problem getting his two fellows organized to see which one is in the ring legally. Spoiler or Swayze. Luis Arriba begging for a tag. He wants to get in there and help his partner. Wilson needs a tag at this point. Swayze in there working him over now. Swayze and Spoiler have come up with some very unique legal tags. Some sort of a sleeper he has on him there. It's not a strangle. Beautiful arm drag. Good takedown. Good getaway. Tackle. Got a toe hold. Swayze has a toe hold on Wilson. <coughs> He's 
Throwing the knees into the shin bone there. Trying to weaken his man. Trying to discourage him with pain. Tagged off with the spoilers. Spoilers in there again. They're working on that leg pretty well. Another tag. They're executing some very well engineered tags. Into the back, get right into the sacroiliac. Another one. They're trying to take Wilson out of action. If they take Wilson out of action, they're probably their ploy is to take Louis Arriba Martinez alone. Wilson trying to get over to his partner. Arriba waiting. And he makes the tag. Louis in there like the tiger that he is. Wilson still doing some catching from the spoiler. Martinez back dropping Swayze. Wax him around and Martinez is something. A double back drop. Costello very disturbed about this situation. His champions don't look too good at this point. Over the top rope, Spoiler. Louis gives Spoiler a chop. There is his finishing hold. This could very well be it. Wow. Swayze got in and kicked Louis right in the ribs. Flying mirror on, on uh, Martinez. The claw hold in Martinez's stomach. That devastating hand that he has. He's bloodied a lot of heads with that. Costello is coaching his man, telling his man, come on, come on. Louis is not the sort of a man that would quit. I don't think he would do that. He doesn't know what it is to quit. Louis needs a tag and he has it. Wilson's back in the ring. I thought he was going to make an account of himself, but Spoiler was right there waiting for him. Got the claw on Wilson now, right in the stomach, right in the abdomen. That can be a concession hold. Yeah, unless he can get out of there and defend himself. He's doing it again. He smashes apples and heads with his hand. Wilson is in trouble, I'm afraid. That spoiler is really pouring on the juice. Just waiting for him to, to give up. Wilson has a lot of intestinal fortitude. Swayze is trying to follow up and weaken the man further. Spoiler getting back in the ring again. Backdrop on Wilson. Martinez coming in for the save. Swayze back in with a legal tag. Throwing Wilson into Swayze. Oh, he ran into a foot. Swayze caught him with a foot. I think he really did some damage. These two fellows, Swayze and Spoiler, they've really got their tag team thing together. And I'm sure that Kangaroo Al Costello has been responsible for the strategy. The camera has me blocked at this point. See what happens here. Wilson's making a good account of himself. Spoiler in for the save. He saved his partner Swayze. Wilson had him for a moment. Wilson's throwing Swayze in the ring again. In the ropes. Got a sleeper on Swayze. Spoiler getting in the ring illegally. Louis Martinez stops him. 
Kangaroo Costello. He and the spoiler work together. With outside interference. The referee didn't see it. Spoiler and Swayze win the match. In an unorthodox manner, however, I must say that the Spoiler and Swayze and Kangaroo Al Costello certainly have had their team wrestling together. Now up to the ring with Ken, and he'll give you the results. The winner of the fall and the match, coming in 11 minutes. The Spoiler, beautiful Bruce Swayze. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the tag team champions of the world here with me. They won a very, very aggressive match. They had fine opponents, Luis Riba Martinez and Jim Wilson, made a very good account of themselves. But I must admit that with that fantastic iron claw that you have, spoiler, uh, you weakened your man, finally got the job done. And I'm not going to congratulate you. That's right. But I Lou must says. say that you, you, you do have a lot of ability. That's right, Lou says. You know, this claw has made a lot of history. Let me bring you up some history on this. Started a few weeks ago, Pistol Pez Watley, the heavyweight champion of the world. This right here, the Iron Claw, ladies and gentlemen, is what put him out of business, and you know it. And let me tell you some more history about this Iron Claw, right here in front of your own eyes, right here in this studio. You saw me lay a boy out here. They had to carry him out of the ring. Tommy Sigler come out, and look what happened to him. He got a taste of the Iron Claw. How many more is out there wanting some taste of this iron claw? How many more has got guts enough to get in that ring? Hey. Baby, just any time you want in that ring, just step right in there with the two world champions, the Spoiler and the beautiful Bruce. Sure and we'll give you a sample of this very, iron claw. I dig it. I'd also like to add that, ladies and gentlemen, in TV land, whoever may be listening, we're here to stay. We're going to be around a long time. We want the best talent in the country and right here, you're going to find it. Now, I'm not taking it away from our opponents. They were tough, but the only thing we had on them, we were a little smarter. And believe me, ladies and gentlemen, the brains prevail. They can have the brute, the strength, they can have the agility. But if they didn't have the brains, baby, forget it, because we're going to take them to the cleaners. That means getting beat. I've got the greatest tag team in the history of wrestling. I've been associated with wrestling quite a few years, and I've been, as you mentioned before, I've been down the pike. But this team here has all the qualifications for the greatest tag team of all times. Because our opponents are going to suffer in silence, linger in doubt, and carry on in despair. Very well spoken. Very well spoken. I'm sitting here right in front of you, Lou says. Will you tell the people out there what happened to your fart up here? Tell them how I'm sitting here. I don't see if you're man enough to tell them what happened. He can't because he's very partial. Well, I did. Uh, nice, I get into a situation where I had to reprimand the spoiler in one of the matches, and uh, we did you have. I also add that you had fined somebody five hundred dollars. Apparently, I was the one. He Why did you tell say the that? people the truth? You were fined five hundred dollars, right. and uh, of course, uh, someone had to pay the price for well, it. We're taking over their hides today here. And this is it right here. That's just fine. And Mr. Spoiler, I've got your match with some people uh, in various areas. Wait a did I or did not put the iron claw on you? Is this the Iron Claw? Yes, you did. That's, That's fine. Right. And there's no argument there's about it. There's going to be a lot of trademarks out there before this war is over. There's going to be a lot of trademarks out there, this Iron Tell Claw. It it. Is, and Tell Sigler, it if you ain't had enough, just get back in there, baby. You got the spoiler, and he's there waiting for you. Well, Tommy Sigler is the kind of a man that is not going to be uh, mesmerized or bluffed by people like you. He's a stump jumper and lounge lizard. That's as far as I'm concerned. Beautiful. What do you I'll mean he's a... What? In what way? Well, you're, you people uh, are not wrestling oriented like Tommy Siegler is, and I think expert wrestling will prevail, and that's going to be what we're going to promote. And I predict that Tommy and his partner 
will be the tag team champions of the world. Uh, yeah, the unorthodox. They're sitting no right here. The world champions are sitting right no here in way. front of you. We are the world champions, and we're going to stay the world champions. And way. we're not changing. We're done. One thing in the middle of that ring in a spoiler. I'm putting that iron claw on them. And, baby, Tommy Sigler, before I get done with you, and if you want to get back in that Thank ring Thank you again, very much, you're gentlemen. You're going to be a vegetable Thank you. when I get done with you. This time, That's I'm going it. to leave it all Beautiful. Thank, no you right. Thank you very much. Thank you. You've just heard from the spoiler, Swayze and Al Costello.